culture is a huge subject that you know many of us talk about in leadership and many of us wrestle with the challenge of you know what is the right culture how do we have a healthy culture to help us move our business forward i think we all understand that you know we can do all the right things technically but if culturally people are not behaving in the right way it can be challenging and often for many organizations that probably means we need to think about some kind of cultural transformation and, and in our work we actually believe that as businesses grow and scale they probably do need to think, actually proactively manage some kind of transformation as the culture that probably served you five years ago may not be the culture that will serve you in the next five years. So in terms of cultural transformation, it is a huge subject and it is quite complex, but we've put together what we call the cultural pyramid, which we hope will give you some stepping stones that you can start to address to move through that journey beyond maybe what for many of us is just a, a baseline of core values. So in terms of, you know, I often get asked, what does, what does good culture look like? And you know, people are searching for the right words, the right statements, the right behaviours. But ultimately, at the pinnacle of, of our culture pyramid, all good cultures, whether you may, may or may not like the values that they live by, ultimately are defined by trust. So a group of people that ultimately really, really trust each other and know that each other will behave and do things in the way that they believe they should be done. And there's an important point there that you know what we think is the right way to behave may not be the, the way other groups of people and other organisations think they should behave. That doesn't matter, we have to just decide for us what's the right way. But ultimately the result of that is trust. So I think that's the, the really important thing to hold on to there. Let's get to the foundation then. The foundation of the culture pyramid is surprising for some people because we, we talk about common, common goal and purpose. And they say, well, what's that got to do with behaviours and culture? Well, if you think about it, you know, no group of people is going to go on a journey where they're going to choose to behave in a way together if they're not doing it for a reason. So given a group of people a reason, some kind of purpose, some kind of goal that they work to together, it's a really important part of, uh, of, of any, any cultural journey, any cultural transformation. What that then gives us is the ability then to, have to what we call resetting or setting or resetting the core values or the culture. Now, I know lots of people like the terms core values, you know, you can call them core beliefs, but ultimately, you know, what are those those headline words, phrases that define what we believe is the core of how we should behave and how we should do things in our organisation. Um, I say setting them because some people I think lose sight of those as they move through their organisational journey. Um, some organisations don't lose sight of them but don't, don't evolve them as I said before, um, as what they had before maybe doesn't suit where they're going next. But having that, that defined is, is really, really important. And I think many organisations get to that point, but the truth is, is then why are cultures then so, so toxic if, if most people are doing that? Well, I think that the big issue then is what then happens is we don't get enough role modelling from the top. So we need role modelling from the leadership. You know, if as leaders are walking past behaviours that are unacceptable, well, we shouldn't be surprised that people are behaving in the wrong way. But also, particularly if you're going on a transformational journey, you know, who are those champions throughout the organisation that are, are then extending our behaviour throughout, throughout the rest of the organisation so that everyone starts to see that is the way we should be behaving and how we should be doing things. There is a final part as well, though, that this doesn't happen easily. They say that most cultural transformation journeys will take anything between two to five years. So when you think about that, you know, where is the implementation of that on an ongoing basis and when it goes slightly off track, how do we enforce um, and discipline bad behaviours but also encourage um, and reaffirm good behaviours. So there needs to be a very definite approach to how we implement um, and, and, and stay true to what we decide are the behaviours we, we want to display. And remember, at the end of the day, culture is just a definition of how we do things around here. So, you know, don't get too bogged down in your core values. You need to, as, I, as, as we said in this pyramid, start with a foundation of a common purpose and goal. Have those core values, core beliefs, core statements that you have that sort of set the foundation. But you need to extend that out into role modeling, role modeling throughout the leadership, but also through the champions through the business that then hopefully brings everyone else on board. And you need to stay true to implementing against those and really, really squashing out the bad behaviors. And, and making sure you keep those good behaviours. So ultimately you end up with a group of people that ultimately trust one another, which is how we define a great culture. So that is the culture pyramid.